What's up guys, it's your boy Matt back again on WeldTube today from South Coast Welding Academy in Houston, Texas. Today we're taking it back to the basics, stuff welding students are going to see day one, really for the first couple weeks of training. So today is going to be aluminum, padding beads, butt joints, lap joints, T-joints. So nice simple stuff, but it's stuff everybody's going to have to do before they get into the more advanced work. So it is what it is. Let's make some fresh content for you guys, come on. All right guys, so for today's demonstration, we're gonna be running off my Miller Dynasty 210. Anytime I do alloys, or especially aluminum, this is my go-to favorite machine. Um, nothing like a Dynasty. So, use this guy. Again, we're gonna do aluminum, so alternating current is a must. Um, no pulser. We're gonna run a .2 pre-flow. I just like, you know, we're in a big shop, there's wind, there's people moving around, so I have a little bit of gas out of the gate and a 10 second post-flow, pretty normal. And I'm just gonna leave it on the pro setting of a 75% balance. So on our wave balance, okay, we're gonna be 75% on the negative side and 25% on the positive side of the wave. So <clears throat> keep that on 75, pretty standard. Um, I think I'm, running, I'm gonna run 100 hertz. Your standard AC in a transformer machine, like a synchro wave would be 60, but I like to run 100 to 120, somewhere like that. It seems to focus that arc a little bit. So that's it. So 100, 100 hertz on our frequency. 75% balance, AC of course, and we're gonna run the pedal. So we're on TIG high frequency impulse. We're not lift arcing today. So that's our machine hooked up to our argon bottle running 25 cubic feet per hour. So again, standard gas flow, nothing crazy out of the box, just very basic. And we're gonna start off, our first thing we're gonna do is a pad of beads, okay? All right guys, to get us started, we're gonna pretend like it's day one in school, wherever the case may be, day one of you learning how to weld aluminum, okay? So I got a small piece of scrap, some drop, some 60-61 T6. It's 1 8 inch thick, uh, pretty typical. It's what I have my students start on anyhow. It's thick enough to hold some heat, but not super thick that it creates other challenges. So pad of beads, why is it important? Okay, for one thing, it's a lot of seat time, okay? It's, th it's time now to try different things. Well with right hand, well with your left hand weld around corners without stopping and so on. It's great practice just sitting there and welding and welding and welding. So the other thing is multi-pass beads, okay? Once you've been in the game for a while, you're gonna be in certain situations where you're welding thicker materials where a single pass just isn't gonna cut it. If you're welding a half inch plate, for instance, you can't just weld a single bead, you need a half inch fillet weld. And to do that is by doing multiple passes, okay? Start getting towards the end, you wanna start easing up on your pedal and then slowly taper out. That'll be your first bead, okay? Being on the edge doesn't hold the heat as well, so it might look a little bit warm, but that's fine. We have a nice straight line to work off of, and we're gonna start building away from that, okay? So just like if these were two pieces of aluminum being welded together with that seam, now we have the toe of our bead, okay? The toe of your bead is where the puddle meets the plate, right on the edge. So we're gonna use the toe of our last bead as the center line for the following beads and so forth. So. Half of our bead's gonna be on top of our previous one. Half of our bead is gonna be on the plate. Just like if we were doing a three or four bead cap on a pipe or whatever the case may be, you're always gonna use the toe of your weld as your center guide as you move on for different multi-passes. So my next bead, same thing. I'm gonna go run right down that toe and we're gonna keep on cranking. I'll probably do four or five beads. I don't need to cover this whole plate. You get the point and then we'll move on to butt slaps and tees. But just wanna see how you're properly supposed to stack your beads on a pad. You don't want any spaces in between, okay? So if you do padding beads with purpose, you get a lot out of it. Don't just sit there and weld a bunch of garbage all over your plate. Think about what you're doing. Think about the multi-passes. Think about the building up. If you have a, a machine shop, say you work for a machine shop and they wreck a part on the machine, you have to do build up so they can remachine it. They don't want to scrap the whole part. This is kind of where this kind of stuff comes into play. Just build up, multi-passes, uniformity, figure out your spacing. A lot of this is muscle memory. You know, I'm not really looking about how far I'm moving or how much filler rod I'm putting into. It's practice, you know how it feels. So it's muscle memory, it's doing it over and over and over. The only way, really good way to get good at anything is do this until you're sick of it and then keep doing it. That's how you get good at anything, okay? Even myself, I've been doing this 15 years and there's still a lot of things I need to do. I sit back and I practice just like everybody else. It's, I'm not special. All these other guys on WeldTube, they're not special. We all got here by practicing. And this is just one more thing to do 
to put that extra notch in your belt and get better at something else. All right, so the first thing before you weld anything, what do you gotta do? You gotta tack it, right? So it's very important that personally, be welding in the shops I've welded in different fabrication experience, you don't wanna weld over a tack if you don't have to. And if you do, make the tack as small as you can. So it's important that you tack the very edges. You don't wanna put a tack about an inch in on your plate where you know, an inch on each side, you have a huge hump in your bead. So I always just, I'll lay my cup right next to it on the table or wherever I'm working, come in from the side, give myself a quick tack, do that on both sides before you weld anything. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna tack this guy up, burn it out real quick. And I know my students have a lot of trouble tacking, especially T-joints and laps where you're holding a piece and you can't really use a piece of filler rod unless you have a third hand to hold it for you. So after I weld this one up, I'll show you how to do that as well. Little tips and tricks. Give yourself a nice hot tack. Last thing you wanna do is get it halfway across your plate. Your tack cracks and your plate starts to come apart. So, you know, give yourself a nice tack. Don't be so hot that you blow the edge of your plates out, but a nice hot tack you know is gonna hold up for you across the way. All right, so. Like I said when I was doing the pad, I was pretending that toe of the weld was just like welding a butt joint. Well, now we actually have one. So we're just gonna keep that seam right on the center of our puddle. And again, muscle memory, but I'm gonna move about an eighth of an inch, stop and dip. So every time I feed my rod, I stop moving with forward progression, try to maintain that uniformity, okay? Make sure I'm nice and smooth, keep a light hand. You don't wanna put a bunch of weight on your, on your resting hand. So nice light hand, make sure you can slide real easy. And when you're ready, just go ahead and light up. And there's your little butt joint. Okay, nice and working on consistency. Each dab, each dime, you want about the same spacing. You want nice uniformity. Got to the end, backed off the torch a little bit. Give yourself a little extra meat there from your filler wire to fill that crater to eliminate any issue with crater cracking. So it's just tiny little things you need to pay attention to, but. Really, it's the uniformity and your spacing and working on your muscle memory, okay? There's your butt joint. Next, we're gonna do a lap joint, all right? And this one really, really throws my students off quite a bit and probably a lot of new guys and ladies coming up in, in the field. So, whenever they see a joint like this, they wanna angle their torch, okay? They wanna angle their torch in, just like if they were doing a T-joint or a different type of fillet weld. That's, on thinner materials like this, you don't want to do that for a few reasons. Biggest reason is if you angle this torch back, which side of these plate, what side of the plates are going to melt first? All right. It's going to take a lot more heat to melt that bottom plate than it is to melt the edge, the thin side of your top plate. Okay. So think of a, a thin material. I mean, eighth inch and under, you wouldn't want to do this on quarter inch plate or anything like that. But think of this just like another butt joint. Okay. You're gonna keep your torch perpendicular to the bottom plate, all right? You don't wanna angle it in. I'm gonna keep my torch straight up and down, but I want about two thirds of my bead. So if we look back at the butt joint, I want about two thirds of this bead to be on the bottom plate, and a third of the bead should just burn the edge of that top plate off, okay? If you angle into it, that top plate's gonna wanna melt back and you're gonna be chasing that melt back the entire way across your plates. So perpendicular with your torch, you don't even need a push angle, just nice straight up and down. And again, two thirds to three quarters of your puddle is gonna be on that bottom plate and one edge of your puddle is gonna be on the top, just in incorporating that edge of that top plate as you go, okay? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Just think of it like another butt joint. All right, like I said, perpendicular torch angle, straight down into the bottom plate. We're just gonna use the outside edge of our puddle to eat the top edge of our top plate off, okay? Don't overthink it. It's just like, it's like a stacked butt joint, if you will. So, here we are. And I was only using this guy here for some counterweight I just didn't want, as I'm filling my material on these small coupons, it's really easy to you start dancing your plate around on your table. So it's always nice to have something heavy just to act as a little bit of a weight. But there's your lap joint, nice full puddle, nice uniformity, nice consistency, okay? Just like a butt joint, just looks a little bit different. All right guys, so next up is a T-joint. The dreaded T-joint, for some reason, it's tough for a lot of newcomers, especially tacking, because you have to hold one piece. Like I said, if you don't have a third hand, so, to tack these by just fusion tacking. So I'm gonna light up on it. 
I want each side to start to melt. You're gonna see each side start to get a little bit wet. As soon as both sides start to get a little wet, you're gonna pulse your pedal real fast and the arc force should tack it together. If it doesn't happen immediately, get back off your pedal and start the steps over again. Don't just sit there with your pedal to the floor trying to get it to, to tack. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna hold it up so we can get a better view. Again, this is not tacked. I have a tack on the other side, but like you can see, there's a gap, no tack, okay? Ease in on your pedal, get both sides to start to get a little bit wet. And once both sides are a little wet, pulse your pedal real fast, and you get a nice fusion tack real quick. And then once you get one tack, then you can grab a piece of filler rod, reinforce your tacks. But at least to get it, you started, get a little bit of, get it to wet out a little bit on both sides, a quick pulse with your pedal, and it should tack up real nice. Both sides are just fusion tacked, okay? Now that we're tacked up, decently 90 degrees. I'm not gonna throw a square on it, but for practice, it's good enough, okay? Now, unlike the lap joint, now we do wanna angle our torch into the actual joint, that right down into the root of the weld, okay? Move forward a little bit. Again, it's gonna be a lot of the same motion. I'm gonna add a little bit more filler rod this time though, so I can build that bead up a little bit higher. But really, other than that, it's all the same. Looks a little different than what we've done on the last few welds. But at the end of the day, same material, same process. It's pretty much the same application, just looks a little bit different. So other than angling my torch in towards the joint, it's gonna be pretty much the same joint, the same weld. I'm gonna use this chunk of plate again, just as a counterweight to keep me stationary on the table. It's a little something to hold me nice and sturdy. I don't have to worry about that. No, no push angle. I'm gonna go straight into the joint, perfectly 90 degrees, splitting my bead top and bottom, and just try to keep it as consistent as you can. All right, guys, last weld of the day, outside corner joint, okay? Again, very simple. The only thing I'm gonna watch for as I'm welding is I wanna make sure the edges of my plate, the two top peaks there, are, are melted over and consumed throughout the weld, okay? If you this uh, good simulation of fabricating a box or something like that in a fab shop where more than likely the weld's gonna be smoothed and sanded out. So just wanna put a nice uniform bead on there, something grindable, or any, really any fabrication like this, valve covers, any type of square box, coolant tanks, um, <clears throat> intercoolers for cars, race applications. A lot of the fit ups are always gonna be a nice corner to corner fit up. I'm gonna create that little trough and give yourself a nice penetratable weld rather than if the plates are overlapping one another and welded on one side. It's always nice to have the nice corner to corner fit up. So fit up here is key, the weld's simple. So just like I said, I'm gonna melt the corners off, make sure it's all consumed, and just try to lay down a uniform bead. Thanks guys for tuning in for uh, Aluminum TIG Welding 101. Hope you gained some knowledge, a few tips and tricks along the way. It's something I'm, I'm passionate about. Aluminum TIG Welding is one of my favorite things, so pass it on to you guys, any little bit that can help. Uh, if there's anything I didn't cover that you might wanna see or know about, feel free to hit my DMs, Warrior Welding TX on Instagram. I can try to answer any questions for you. Um, again, thanks again for tuning in. Remember, every Monday night, 7 p.m., new stuff drops on YouTube at the one and only WeldTube channel. And uh, remember, WeldLife.com. Use my code, WarriorWeldingTX, get yourself 10% off, and help with the St. Jude campaign because every little bit can help us out. So please, thanks again. We love you guys. Check us out next time. Shoo, boy! <laughs>